The escalating tension between the Philippines and China in the West Philippine Sea could potentially lead to conflict if the U.S. participates in the country's rotation and resupply missions. This is the view shared by several experts and netizens in the Philippines, suggesting that the directive from the Philippine president to avoid exacerbating the situation is prudent. This raises the question among Filipinos, will a war truly occur if the Americans join the resupply mission, and is the president's directive to de-escalate the conflict the right course of action given the repeated harassment by the Chinese? According to experts, the president's directive to avoid further escalating tensions between the Philippines and China is entirely appropriate. This stance effectively communicates to the international community that the Philippines is not responsible for initiating conflict. However, despite China's repeated aggression towards Philippine vessels, the public also needs to see tangible efforts from the president to defend the Philippines' territorial integrity. In summary, while the president's statement may be considered appropriate, it is clear that it lacks depth. The president has various options to address China's actions more effectively. For example, the president could publicly announce plans to include the U.S. in future resupply missions if China's aggressive actions persist. This could be framed not as escalating tensions, but rather as a response to an offer from the U.S. to support regional peace. The president could argue that the involvement of the U.S. is not aimed at attacking China but at reinforcing mutual defense commitments and maintaining regional stability under international cooperation principles. Thus, accepting U.S. assistance should not be viewed as exacerbating the conflict. Instead, it should be seen as a means to ensure the success of resupply missions for Philippine troops. If China continues its aggression, it will be clear that it is China that is escalating the conflict, not the Philippines. Would there be a potential for war if we involve the U.S. in the country's resupply mission? Consider the worst-case scenario where the U.S.'s participation might lead to a direct confrontation between ships. Initially, the Chinese could have an advantage due to their substantial naval presence in the West Philippine Sea, potentially causing a temporary retreat of U.S. and Philippine vessels. However, this situation would also provide the U.S. with grounds to alert the international community about the dangers posed by China in the region. Such international pressure could manifest in various ways. The U.S. and its allies might impose economic and diplomatic sanctions on China, targeting key sectors or officials to compel China to de-escalate. The U.S. could also push for legal actions in international forums, such as the International Court of Justice, against Chinese aggression or violations of maritime laws. Additionally, the U.S. might form a global coalition to apply diplomatic and economic pressure on China, involving coordinated sanctions or other punitive measures. In extreme cases, there could be calls for international arrest warrants against Chinese leaders or military officials involved in aggressive actions, though this would be highly complex and contentious. Faced with such international pressure, China might perceive these actions as a significant threat, possibly leading it to escalate the situation by declaring war. Ultimately, this conflict could evolve into a broader confrontation between China and multiple countries highlighting China's role as a major global threat. Therefore, it is unlikely that China would take actions against the U.S. that would lead to a direct war. Thus, the Philippines allowing the U.S. to join the resupply mission would not necessarily escalate tensions, but rather serve as a measure to counteract China's aggression. Some argue that the Philippines should first strengthen its military before confronting China. However, a 10% increase in the Philippines' militarization is negligible compared to the 10% continuous expansion of China's military capabilities, given the vast disparity in their respective arsenals. In other words, while the Philippines is increasing its strength, China is simultaneously growing even more powerful. Therefore, the Philippines' efforts to strengthen its position must include not only expanding its arsenal but also solidifying alliances. Strengthening alliances with more countries is crucial for the Philippines to effectively counter China's aggression. 
it is evident that the Philippines has made significant strides in this regard. Thus, utilizing these advancements to deter Chinese aggression is a reasonable approach. It is more effective to use the current military enhancements to address immediate threats rather than focusing solely on further strengthening amidst the imminent danger of being unable to protect its islands in the near future. Furthermore, the BRP Sierra Madre is nearing the point of collapse, and China's expansion of military bases at Escota Shoal will make it increasingly difficult for the Philippines to transport supplies and materials to stabilize the vessel. If China continues to increase its presence in the remaining Philippine islands, this could lead to the vessel's eventual destruction. Such a development may result in the complete loss of Philippine control over these territories, potentially enabling China to achieve its objective of consolidating control over the Philippines. Moreover, the complete loss of the West Philippine Sea would result in a severe crisis for the Philippines, as it would mean the loss of the country's largest source of marine resources for Filipino fishermen. Therefore, protecting our territory is also crucial for the nation's economy. Weak national security implies economic vulnerability, as investors will be deterred if the country is easily manipulated by psychological tactics from China. While the president's statement to de-escalate tensions may not be entirely wrong, it reflects a lack of strategic depth in the current administration's approach. If the government continues to insist that we do not yet need American assistance, all efforts to safeguard our territory may ultimately be in vain, and it could be too late to seek U.S. help when needed. Often in the Philippines, there is a disconnect between government perspectives and the views of ordinary citizens. Many Filipinos tend to listen to experts, who often communicate in English, a language perceived as more authoritative and intelligent. As an ordinary Filipino, I use English to express my views on this issue, not as an expert but as a concerned citizen who cares deeply about my country. Through this video, I hope the government will take the time and interest to consider its content. Additionally, I aim to inform the international community, particularly China, that every Filipino, whether an ordinary citizen, a politician, or a professional, holds meaningful perspectives on this issue that could influence government decisions. Therefore, China should not be complacent, as the ongoing expression of Filipino views might still persuade our government to seek assistance from the United States.